Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I am at SMTAI 2019 and welcome to that Scoop Show. Uh, the idea of the Scoop Show is just to kind of have a bit of a free format, give you guys an opportunity to let me know what you think is going on, what's challenging you guys in the industry. One of the things that we've been talking about, particularly over the last few weeks, is, is kind of this tipping point with Industry 4.0, getting to the point where we can actually deliver something to customers. We've been talking about it for way too long, mm -hmm. and it's now now time to, to deliver stuff. And Juan, for example, from Ko Young's point of view, you're, you're starting to use AI, you're starting to layer up different technologies, different intelligence, you've got new versions of software coming out that include those elements. Is that meeting a custom, customer demand? Are customers asking for those kind of industry 4.0 kind of solutions? Absolutely. They keep asking for it. Uh, what's interesting is that even though they ask Industry 4.0, everyone asks or their interpretation is something a little different. And uh, like we were talking earlier, it's uh, interesting to see how the connectivity, in the past we only had one, SexGem, and it worked pretty well. So now we have, I think, three and because we don't control any of that, it just adds to our cost in the development to make it uh, work with all the others. Yeah. So it, if I had a wish, please pick one and we'll go along with it. <laughs> well, if we ask Michael, Michael's definitely going to pick one. So mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a no-brainer. But, you know, there's, there's a big element. I don't want it to turn into a CFX debate because I know we've done plenty of those. But getting that connectivity and the digital transformation and getting the factory to a point where we can lay a data on is an important part of it and, and CFX is an important route to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, it, as you said, it'd be great to stick with one standard and I will always go on with CFX simply because it is different. But the real story here is about the integration of the machine and the software. Because the way I see the industry 4.0 is at different layers. So the layer one is definitely at the machine side, where machines have a lot of very clever software, as, as yours do, but who would like to get more information from other machines in the line without caring about who they are, so that they can start to produce the software which is reflecting a real added value for the machine itself in its performance in what it's been asked to do on the line. Maybe that's change over faster, maybe that's been more flexible uh, in all kinds of different ways. Maybe it's by finding that way towards zero defects. So there is a lot that you can do once you have that baseline information, that's layer one. And so we see that different people are coming to industry 4.0, as you said, with different kind of expectations. Some are driven by that layer one. Others are driven from layer two, which is our kind of layer, where we empower those at layer one by allowing and facilitating the sharing of information from the factory in terms of schedules and product information, etc. And so layer two works with layer one, layer two is the digital MES. You then get to layer three. What's layer three? Um, this is where we used to have ERP and we used to have systems like, you know, uh, planning what our factory is going to do for the next three to six months, which are obsolete now because things are happening and changing day by day. And so we need a whole new generation of AI tools which utilize data from layer one and layer two to give that overall factory visibility and control. Okay, so yeah, so we're, we're starting to build through those layers. And Juan, when you look at that first layer, you're already doing that and you're using AI to develop, for example, the optimization software that you have between printer and, um, yeah, KPO. And then beyond that, you have relationships between AOI, I guess, and the placement machines and the ovens on the other side. And then you get to that next scale of where do you go from there. Part of, part of that success isn't just connectivity between machines, it's connectivity between you as individuals, you as companies. Absolutely. Nobody can do this on their own. So, and that's, that's the key here, that uh, we have expertise in our, uh, call it arena or our sandbox, but you have to play nice with the others and open it up because as you say, our KPO, which is the process uh, op printer optimization, is uh, basically putting intelligence in the, on the printer side, but then you go farther into the AOI and then we have the auto programming 
which is, uh, you know, it's uh, the engine of our AI to, to help it, you know, learn. But then you have to deal with, uh, for example, our mounter feedback. Uh, one of the things that uh, companies want is obviously to, to produce better product without putting more effort into it. So that part, an engineer won't fix what they don't know is broken. So they need that data to be able to analyze and improve the process. And that's one of the things that, obviously we don't make a mounter. Yeah. So we got to play with every mounter and it's not like you solve it once and it's done. Each mounter has a different architecture and uh, data transfer uh, hierarchy. So you got to reinvent the wheel with every one. Yeah, and that's a big challenge. And you said, you know, maybe it's three standards. It's probably like nine at the moment. And we need to, we need to narrow that down to down something simple, but we need to get to the point where the guy in the factory can get can deploy a digital solution quickly and simply and relatively inexpensively, even if they've got hundreds of machines or maybe thousands. Well, you know, you need to keep the eye on the goal here. I've seen the result of this closed loop feedback that, you know, the software, the Young software is making. It's not subtle. I saw a step change increase, which was an order of magnitude in, you know, increase in yield. That's something that you know, a, f a factory manager dreams about having, and yet it is achievable by software. And that's not software from any one particular company. It's data from many different companies being exchanged in a way that makes a level playing field across all vendors, and a piece of software that's you know, very clever, which you have which is then doing the analysis of that and producing the result. But the result is there in black and white. And people think that, oh, this smart loop is making a little bit of a difference. It's not. It's a huge difference. And people really underestimate the value of software on all of these different layers. Yeah. So if we, throw this, if we throw this debate forward three years, say, let's throw it three, th three years and say, okay, regardless of which it is, but connectivity is taken for granted, all the machines are connected horizontally, all the machines are connected vertically to, to the host. What power does that give us? What can we then, what can you as a, a vendor and what can the EMS as a, as a user start to expect from, from their performance? So what we expect is that our integration will be much simpler, so that drives a cost down for us, but the big winner is the user because at the end, they're the ones that are uh, getting the full advantage of all the integration. I'm just doing pieces of it. He does pieces, somebody else does pieces. And it's that final piece of all integrated where the user is the winner, which is our customer. That's how it should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we want it to be. And do you think when you look forward to that, do you think AI plays a big role in, in reaping those benefits? Absolutely, because the thing is that with AI, the computing power is much faster and a lot of expertise in our industry has gone. Yeah. So by bottling up, how we say it is, you bottle up somebody's brain before they retire <laughs> and yeah. then that's how KPO was uh, created. Yeah. It's just uh, AI gives us that extra dimension of uh, computing power that makes get to the finish line much faster. Yeah, and Michael, when you look at this um, this utopian world where everything's connected both horizontally and vertically we're creating a huge amount of data so we need something like AI we need powerful engines to be able to take that data turning it into intelligence and using that intelligence to make better decisions yeah and that is happening already I mean the example of the co young software I mean it, it knows how to generate a value from the data that it has it doesn't need to see every piece of data um, it, it will know what it needs to work on and it adapts and it learns, that's really good. And so you look into different aspects of manufacturing, whether it's lean materials or whether it's planning for the next 10 minutes or the next couple of hours. Um, it's utilization of humans through the use of augmented reality, giving people instructions, managing those resources in real time. What I'm talking about this layer three, I mean layer, layer two is our digital MES, which is actioning everything. But then when you get to the very top, whether you're thinking about design, whether you're thinking about planning, about materials, you've got a set of data which can be trusted to make uh, an analysis on. So a true AI to run the factory is 
very shortly available. Yeah. I'm thinking in the next year or three, maybe two, yeah. we're going to be seeing a baby in charge of a factory because yeah. the AI will start having to learn what makes sense to a manufacturing site. So, you know, kind of hand in hand, the AI and the manager, the experienced managers of, of production, they're going to be working together and AIs are going to play more and more of a role into those critical decisions that are made to satisfy immediate customer needs. Yeah, and we we talked and we talked we we spoke earlier about the idea of millennials who have different relationship with technology coming through, becoming operators, becoming production managers, needing this much more intuitive approach. And I think I mentioned to you both the idea of Alexa for the for the <laughs> factory floor. Is that realistic and how different do you think our interface will be with these machines? You know, we're used to the keyboard and, and pressing buttons. I know we don't have the kind of C colon prompt at the top anymore, but, but we're used to doing that. But that's going to change. I agree with you. If you could tell the machine a command and it saves you several clicks of a mouse, that you get the, to the end result much faster. So uh, it's not far-fetched. No. And interrogation, for me, one of the keys to the value of uh, Alexa is, mm. you know, it's that it's that ability to connect uh, the the system that's on there and interrogate. So to ask, how are certain lines performing? What's my yield on line three? You know, what's the backup on line two? What's going on there? Do you see mm. that as something that 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 is is in our future? Absolutely, yes. Um, right now, I mean, we've just released a kind of augmented reality, and one of the most popular features of that is the ability to talk to it and you listen to the response as well um, because people they want to work hands-free now they want to be able to deal with concepts they want to say I've got a, a potential opportunity for gain here how can I you know what are the things that are influencing this because we you know effectively within a couple of uh, in a couple of months or years maybe we have all of the data that we can use in a reliable way it is then of the quality that can be used for such applications. Such applications already exist. I mean, you're not talking science fiction, you're talking about what we bought for Christmas last year. Yeah. So <laughs> this is simply a matter of putting two things together. Yeah. Uh, it may not take years. No, it should be. It should, it should happen quite quickly. But exciting times ahead. It keeps you, you, know, it keeps you guys getting up early and getting into the office every day and coming up with new, new solutions for your customers so so that makes things that makes makes things fun for you guys and your teams as well absolutely uh, that's we wake up every morning to you know get to that next step to yeah. make things easier and in the end a value for our customers yeah absolutely and it's exciting to see the industry actually change yeah because for the last five years everything got a little bit better incrementally faster now we're seeing a whole new generation we're of stuff. Taking steps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And those steps are exactly what you know the the kind of OEMs and EMS companies that are saying, "Come on, where 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 are we going to see this value from Industry 4.0?" They're the determinable, definable, measurable steps that they need to see. So that's um, that that's what we need. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. Thanks for chatting and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.